Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today, how could GPU makers let this happen? Intel's making the first big change to this in over a decade. Nvidia's doing what now? And we have everything on Intel's Arc GPUs. But first, this video is sponsored by Opera GX, the browser that's made for gamers. And I don't mean this kind of made for gamers. I'm talking useful features like forced dark mode, hot tabs killer, instant access to Twitter, Discord, and others. Not only that, but with GX Control, you can limit how much bandwidth, memory, and CPU usage is taken by the browser. That way you can game without worrying about your browser taking an obscene amount of resources. Plus, there's a ton of sweet customizations like picking a custom wallpaper, browser sounds, background music, and more. Oh, and did I mention it comes with an ad blocker and a free VPN built right into the browser? Well, it does, and it's all free. Now, if you're worried that switching will be hard, don't. Opera GX easily lets you bring over your browsing history, cookies, save passwords, and more in just a couple clicks. And Opera GX is even on mobile. So don't wait any longer and pick up the free browser that's made for you by clicking the link in the description below. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, while GPU prices have been through the roof, build quality looks to be tanking, likely due to manufacturers pushing out cards as quickly as they can. The story originally comes from two different Redditors who opened up their brand new GPUs only to find a pretty major issue. First, an ASUS RTX 3080 Ti Tough OC was completely missing thermal pads on a full row of memory modules. Next, on Nvidia's own Founders Edition RTX 3080, you can see that the thermal pads were completely misaligned, which according to the user, caused overheating. Hey, I'm not surprised. And both of these are not long after a story I covered where a user found out that their new card still had the adhesive covers over the thermal pads. Oh, and a finger cot was left on another card. Basically, like I said, these are likely issues because manufacturers are trying to get cards out as quickly as they can to feed demand, but that's definitely no excuse. These are pretty major mistakes that could fry your card. And what's worse is that many manufacturers will void your warranty if you open them. So you either risk an issue after your warranty is out or open it and void the warranty anyway. Not exactly a great situation. Next up, it looks like Intel may actually be changing their stock coolers for the first time in over a decade. The story originally comes from this Twitter user and later WCCF Tech. And while the user isn't 100% sure that it's real, it makes perfect sense. Intel's new socket LGA1700 is rumored to be bigger than last gen, so it requires a new heat spreader. When it comes to the new coolers, you can see that they're allegedly called laminar, and they're set to come with Intel's non-K models, given it mentions 65 watt CPUs. As you can see, there's three different fans. First, we have the RS1, which comes with Intel's Pentium and Celeron CPUs, and it doesn't have any RGB lighting. Then the RM1, which comes with the i3, i5, and i7, and has an RGB ring around it. And finally is the RH1, which comes with Intel's i9 processors and has RGB. Now, I will say that it states that these are for placement only, so they likely aren't the final design. The logo is also their old one, so this is likely an outdated slide. Still, it looks like Intel is set to finally change their stock cooler design, and they're doing it very similarly to AMD. Next up for today, if you've been following the GPU market, you know that it's coming up on a year now that GPUs have been nearly impossible to find, at least at MSRP. And before I get to the story, don't forget to check out my RX 6800 non-XT GPU giveaway. All you have to do is make sure you're subscribed to the channel and visit the link in the description below to enter. Anyway, GPU makers are obviously aware of the terrible market conditions, but apparently they won't be getting much better anytime soon, as a new report from Video Cards claims that Nvidia is now planning to release an updated RTX 2060. Yeah, that's a 2060, not 3060, and it comes with 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. That's right, Nvidia is planning to re-release a three-year-old GPU. And to make matters worse, they told board partners to expect the card by the end of this year or by January. Basically, Nvidia expects things to be so bad by the end of the year that re-releasing a last-gen part will be something gamers want. And don't get me wrong, 
I get it, in that NVIDIA will be able to use a different process other than Samsung's 8 nanometer node, so they could have a separate foundry working on it, but it just shows how bad things are right now. I really don't even know what to say honestly. Hopefully things will get better sometime next year. And lastly for today, in a recent video, I discussed a Twitter post by leaker Graymon55, where he claimed to have seen a slide on Intel's upcoming discrete GPUs, and I'm talking their ARC gaming GPUs codenamed Alchemist. Well, that slide looks to have been leaked on the Baidu forums, and given it's real, this essentially confirms just about everything we need to know about Intel's DG2 GPUs. Either way, as you can see, the slide lists both AMD and Nvidia's GPU lineup and orders them based on price. When we move over to the Intel part, it looks like the company is planning to release two GPUs, one that's set to compete in the mainstream price bracket and one in the mid to high end. Now, when I say GPUs, I mean the actual chip, and just like AMD and Nvidia, Intel could make more than one SKU from a GPU, like how the GA102 makes up the 3090, 3080 Ti, and 3080. When it comes to the lower end part, it apparently has a TGP of 75 watts, is said to be priced between $100 and $200, and will likely challenge Nvidia's GTX 1650 Super. Next is the one we discussed from Graymon55. This one comes with a TGP of between 175 and 225 watts, and this one I will say likely makes up more than one card, given it's a range of wattage. Either way, it's between $300 and $500 and looks to compete with the 3060 and 3070 range of GPUs. At the end of the day, while it looks like Intel won't be challenging Nvidia or AMD's best, I think it's a great start and proves a third competitor is in fact here. So while that does it for today, are you excited for Intel's upcoming GPUs, or are you just disappointed that Nvidia is releasing a 3 year old GPU? Let me know down in the comments below, and if you liked the video please subscribe, and as always, have a great day!